in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. Because <clears throat> here's, here's the, the basic problem. We, we're in a new covenant, but we still act like the old covenant. That's the problem. That's why Jesus got in so much trouble was because he didn't act like an old covenant person. He thought in terms of new covenant. Why? Because the new covenant is in relationship with God. The old covenant did not give you a relationship with God. In Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, but now hath he, Jesus, obtained a more excellent ministry. Think about that. His ministry now is better than it was when he was on the earth. And it's better than the ministry as a whole. Talk about the old covenant ministry. He said, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. You hear that? We've got a better covenant. I know you know that. I know you've heard it before. But you need to realize it's true. The old covenant is not the better covenant. <clears throat> the, we, he was made the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Now, what do you know about promises? Well, all the promises are yes and amen in Christ. And we have better promises than the old covenant. But yet we keep going back to the old covenant and finding those promises and trying to live them out. Do you realize that you have better promises? Now, the better promises include the old covenant promises, but they're even better than that. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. In other words, we don't need a second if the first one was good enough. But since the first one wasn't, we needed a better covenant. For finding fault with them, he saith, and watch, behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Now, what's he talking about? He's talking about when he's going to institute a new covenant. He says, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay? The house of the prince with God and the house of praise. He said, I'm going to make a new covenant with them. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. He said, that's not the kind of covenant we're going to have. Now watch verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I would, notice, this is the covenant. You want to know what the covenant is? Here it is. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they, will, they shall be to me a people. Do you hear that? He said, notice, he said, I'm going to put it in their minds and I'm going to write it in their hearts. You're going to know what to do. Now watch, it goes even further. Verse 11, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. Who is the all? The all that are in the new covenant. See, if you're in the new covenant, you don't have to be told, Know the Lord. Know the Lord. But yet, what do we hear in most Christianity? Oh, you got to know him. you got to draw close. you got to get in that intimate spot. And it's amazing because the people that always say that always sound like they have found something you don't know, know anything about. But he said, everybody in this new covenant will know him from the least to the greatest. So if you're in him, if you are in the new covenant, you know him. Now, can you know him better? Of course. You can always know him better, amen? But you know what? Once you know a person to a certain degree, anything you know after that, anything you learn after that is just going to be, you know, as we used to say, uh, you know, just the, the gravy on top. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not necessarily necessary, but it's just some good little tidbit to know, right? right? And so you know him. Why? If you're in this new covenant, because it's the only way you get in this new covenant is to know him. Does that make sense? 
So all this stuff that we see where people are always trying to get you to know him, get you to press in in the sense of, well, just there's this thing. It's almost like you're straining. And that goes the opposite of what Jesus said. He said, if you're tired, if you're weary, come to me. He didn't say, come to me and I'll make you strain even more trying to get in. He said, come to me. He said, my yoke is easy. Isn't that right? But yet, what do we see? We see people burdened down with the yoke of religion. Always trying to be good enough. Beloved, that's an old covenant mindset. That you have to be good enough to deserve the things that God has provided. Now listen, I've already said, I'm not talking about living loose. I'm not talking about living just a, you know, well, I don't care kind of life. One that just sin, oh, well, that's no big deal. I'm not talking about that. But beloved, if you're in this new covenant, you have a new nature. You have a new spirit in you. Sin is not your nature anymore. Now, your head may try to, you know, the enemy can try to do things. You can try to do things. You can look at things. But all I'm saying is that if you're born again, he wrote his laws in your heart and he put them in your mind and your desire is to do the will of God. And when you mess up, guess what? It bothers you. But the problem is the enemy will try to take that and try to amplify it to where you feel like a dirty dog for months, years even. And you have to realize, no, 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 that even if you mess up, he is just and faithful. If you'll confess it, if you'll just agree with him what he said, Father, that was wrong. I get it. I'm stupid. Okay, let's move on, right? I receive your forgiveness. You don't have to call yourself stupid. We don't want that coming to pass. Amen. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I was acting stupid. There you go. I don't know though. Stupid is and stupid does. Anyway, so that's... that's, that's I'm trying, I'm trying, okay? <laughs> but, but you don't get bogged down in what generally we know as sin consciousness. You should have a righteousness consciousness. You ought to know that you're right with God. See, when you know that you're right with God, see, that's the essence of this new covenant is that we had our conscience. Do you get that? It's, it's right here. Watch. He even says it. Well, it's further down. We'll get back to it. But the idea is that in this new covenant, we have our conscience purged of our sins. That means means you're not always sitting around going, oh, man, I remember when I did this wrong. I remember when I did that wrong. I don't even know why God would listen to me. I don't know why he would heal me. I mean, I hadn't done anything. and I remember the things I did do that were bad. See, that's not what he's talking about. He says if, if you are in his covenant, you've had your conscience purged of your sin. What does that mean? That means when you awake, because you have the spirit of your father in you, the first thing you do, the first idea would be along the lines of, good morning, father. Not, hello, God. (laughs) See, there's a difference between God and father. Now, here he says, I'll be their God, and they'll be my people, and that's good. But we have to understand that he has put his spirit into our hearts, whereby we cry unto him, Abba, Father. See, we don't look at him as the judge. We look at him as our father, our advocate even in that sense. Amen. Does this make sense? Yes. 